Yeah. 
God, hallelujah. Send the fire, send the wind, and send the rain. Sunday was Pentecost Sunday, but aren't you glad on Wednesday you can still feel the power of the Holy Ghost and moving upon our hearts and moving upon our lives. I can feel the Holy Ghost tonight. Can you feel Him moving tonight? Hallelujah. He's in this house tonight. Let's sing it again tonight and just worship Him and praise Him. Send the fire, send the wind, and send the rain. Hallelujah. 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 Send the rain. Send the fire. Send the wind. house tonight the Holy Ghost wants to move and touch our hearts and touch our lives tonight hallelujah 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 God's not dead he's still alive we can feel his presence on a Wednesday night Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, do what you want to do in this house. Hallelujah. He's not through. He wants to move in this house. He wants to touch tonight. Worship the Lord and sing it again tonight. Sing it unto Him and worship Him and praise Him. Let him move upon your heart and let him move upon your life tonight. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Send the rain, send the fire, send the wind, send the Holy Ghost Send the power, 
just seems out of place. I'm tired of formality, you know I'm tired. matter what we have planned tonight what matters is that the Holy Ghost moves in our heart and moves in our life tonight he's not through with what he wants to do tonight just surrender your heart and surrender your life to him and let him move in your heart let him move in your life do you feel what I feel tonight Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Continue to let the Holy Ghost move in our heart. Let him to move in our life tonight as we continue in the service tonight. I feel he wants to do something special in our midst tonight. If we be obedient to him and let him move in our heart. Move in your life no matter what you have need of. He's here tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah,
sing it again tonight and just worship him and praise him. Just worship him and praise him and let him move. the Holy Ghost, send the rain. This is what America needs. This is what our young people need. This is what the children need. Amen. I don't remember if it was Sunday morning or Sunday night or Tuesday night, last night in prayer money, but someone made a prayer request saying that the, the devil and the witches and all was sending out the spirit, the evil spirits upon our young people during the summer. Our young people and our children need the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The Holy Ghost is greater than any power of Satan. The Holy Ghost is greater than any power of the witchcraft. And we, full of Pentecostal Holy Ghost believers, need to send the Holy Ghost out upon our young people and upon Amen. our children and upon our hearts and our lives. This is what we need more and more in America. This is what our children need. This is what our young people need. This is what our senior citizens need. This is what we need in our hearts and our lives today. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost to move. He's greater than anything. He's greater than anything. He's greater than anything. Hallelujah. It's good to have each and every one of you here tonight. Welcome. Announcements, I don't have a clue what the announcements are. Only thing I know is we have graduation on Friday night at 7 o'clock. And Sunday morning, Sunday school, and morning worship, and Sunday night. Come and be here and believe, expect God to do anything. Any other announcements?
Then Sunday night is Violent Road Christian Fellowship. And Sister Rebecca will be preaching that Sunday night. So be praying for her this week. And, and be, come and show our support. And the Lord's going to move and touch that night. Amen. You ready to give tonight if our ushers will come tonight? Our junior ushers and junior singers. Y'all should have just stayed up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you feel what I feel tonight? Aren't you glad that we can feel His power? We can feel His presence. We can feel His anointing. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God. Thank you again for the opportunity we have to give tonight as we bring your power, your offering to you tonight. I pray all those that give tonight, I pray that you give back unto them, pressed down, shaken together. You said bring you all of our tithes into the storehouse and see if you would not open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon us. We proclaim blessings upon the congregation tonight as they give unto you. And Father God, we give you the thanks and the praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. These are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide in your world. And we are your laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Be all he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. club, boys club, girls club, youth club, all of the children and youth can be dismissed to their clubs. <laughs> be careful back there, kids. Amen. As we go to the Lord in prayer tonight, we got some prayer requests that we need to remember. Uh, Brother Walcott texted me before service and wanted to remember Sister Walcott in prayer. She knows she was in the hospital the weekend and went home Sunday, but she said her side was hurting her again, and she took the medication that the doctor gave her and laid down. So he said he's going to stay at home with her tonight, but wanted us to remember her in prayer. So let's remember Sister Walcott in prayer. I still remember Brother Ashbury. I don't see him here tonight, but he was in the hospital this weekend also. So let's remember Brother Ashbury. Let's remember Sister Rebecca. As you know, she's ministering Sunday night for the community service. We need to just pray for a special touch upon her heart and her life. Amen. Any prayer requests on the left side over here? My left. You're right. <laughs> Any prayer requests? Amen. Any on this side over here then? My right. <laughs> okay. Johnny. Okay. Hmm. 
Praise the Lord. So remember Sister Tanya's brother in prayer. He had a quadruple bypass surgery, I believe, this week. So let's just remember uh, him in prayer. Amen. Any others on this side? Sister Joyce? Mm-hmm. Amen. Sister Mandy? Sister Lily, uh, remember Pastor uh, and Seymour come home, fly home tomorrow, so just to remember them in prayer. Uh, still remember the Phillips prim family, they had Brother Phillips' funeral yesterday, so just remember Sister Nadine and the children and grandchildren in prayer. Robin, do you have one? the healer. Amen. Any others? Now let's take these knees to the Lord in prayer tonight. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you said we're two or three. Are gathered together in your name. You shall be in the midst of them. You said we agree on anything it shall be done. We pray tonight that you meet each one of these needs, Lord. We pray for Sister Walcott. Father, Lord, her side has been hurting, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you just let your healing power to flow through her body and heal her and touch her, Lord. Pray for Brother Ashbury, Lord, that you just let your healing power to flow, touch him and minister to him. We pray for Sister Mandy tonight with this headache, Lord, this migraine. You're able to heal her and touch her, Lord. 
In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Sister Debbie's request. Johnny, Father, Lord, you're able to touch and minister in this need and this situation. In the name of Jesus, we pray for this praise report of this one that hadn't seen his father since he was five years old, Lord. We thank you for this. We pray that you just work this out, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for Sister Katrina's prayer request, Lord, that you're still on the throne and you can still protect us and keep us. We pray for Sister Lily tonight that fell, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you touch her and minister to her. In the name of Jesus, touch the Phillips family, Lord. Minister to Sister Phillips, Lord, and her family. In this time of need, your Lord, you're able to comfort and strengthen, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray for Robin as he goes to this kidney doctor tomorrow. You're the healer, Lord. You said by your stripes we are healed. You're able to heal and touch, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be with Pastor and Seymour as they come home tomorrow, Lord. I pray that you give them traveling mercies. Father, Lord, be with Rebecca as she ministers at the community service on Sunday. I pray that you burn your word way down deep inside of her soul. Give her a message of the Holy Ghost, Lord, and speak through her and use her, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We 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 praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Anyone else have a praise report tonight? Nikki? Uh huh. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together.
Lord is good. Amen. Let's open our Bibles tonight to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3 in the New Testament. Another writing of Paul. The last three Wednesdays we've been looking in some of the writings of Paul. Uh, we looked at first in the book of Acts. I talked about the way. Are you in the way? And talked about in the scripture there in Acts. Uh, when he was blinded by the light. It was talked about the way. Then last week we looked at where he said. None of these things shall move me. And we talked about what are you letting move you? What's moving you? And Paul said that uh, none of these things shall move me. And we need to uh, make sure that things don't move us. In the book of Philippians, he talks about being attained. And I want to talk to you a few minutes tonight about being attained. Philippians chapter 3. You can stand for the reading of the word if you like. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3. Let's begin reading with verse number 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and count all, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is Christ, the f which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I, I follow after that if I may apprehend that for which I also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, Whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be ye followers together of me, and mark ye them which walk, so as you have us for an example. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that's alive and a powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. I pray tonight that you'd fill me with your Holy Ghost tonight. Let me just speak, thus saith the word of the Lord. Your words are in my heart. I pray that you let it to come out. The things that you breathed into it. I pray that you touch our hearts and touch our lives tonight. Let us receive your word and apply it to our hearts and our lives. And Father God, we pray we give you the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. If you're reading in this scripture, you see over and over again that he uses uh, two words. One of them is attained, and the other one is apprehended. Attained and apprehended. In our hearts and our lives, we need to be attained, and we need to be apprehended. Paul, Paul is writing here, and he says, What things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. He had everything. If you read in the earlier scriptures there, it says, If anyone could boast in the flesh, I could. If any man thinketh that he could trust in the flesh, I could. He said, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. 
He said, I was doing everything right. I was a Pharisee. I was uh, going about killing all, persecuting the church and all of these things. And this is where God got a hold of him on the way and changed his way. And he was in the way and God put him on the right way. We looked at this a couple weeks ago. As we think about this, he said, but all of these things that I lost were things that I thought were important. What things I thought were gain to me, now I call it a loss for Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ gets a hold of our heart and gets a hold of our life, things change. The things that we thought were important doesn't make any difference anymore. The things that were special to us, God changes it. And the only thing that matters now is the things about Jesus Christ. He says, yea, doubtless, I counted all things but laws. He said, I counted it all laws, but laws for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. He said, I counted it all laws that I may know my Lord Jesus Christ. He was out trying to, trying to persecute the church and the, the Lord attained him. The Lord apprehended him. The Lord got a hold of him, blinded him by this light and got a hold of him. And now he says that, that I may know him, the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, that I do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Now he's saying the things that were special to me, the things that I do for the Lord Jesus Christ, I've considered lost. He said, I've been shipwrecked. I've been prisoned. I've done all of these things. But for the excellency of Jesus Christ and what Jesus, knowledge of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter that I may win Christ. That I may win Christ. We need to win Christ. If we look at these things, we can see another things that some things that are important. First of all, he says that I may win Christ. And Paul's writing, he also talks a lot about uh, sports events and, and athletics and stuff. So, and he's talking about here, he says that I may win Christ. It doesn't matter about anything else in our heart, anything else in our life. What matters is, as Paul saying, uh, that I may win Christ. Christ. It doesn't matter all the things that I've lost, every things that I've suffered, that I may win Christ. That he may be found in him. Listen to the things that he said. Be f that I may win Christ. If you go win Christ, you must be found in him. It's not our works of righteousness that makes a difference, but it's being found in Christ. Paul said, I'd done everything right. I lived a righteous life. I was doing everything I was supposed to do. But I found out that the law, living by the law, doesn't make any difference. What matters is that Jesus Christ that I may found in him. The way we get salvation, the way we get deliverance, the way that we get hope is by being found in Jesus Christ. Not trusting in our own ability, not trusting in us, but trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ and be founding in Him. And be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. How do we win? How do we get found by Him? By faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. By trusting in Him and believing in Him and having confidence in faith. Because by faith we are saved. By believing in the death and burial and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our source. Then he goes on to say that I may know Him. I may win Him. I may be found in Him. And then he says that I may know him that I may know him that K-N-O-W know him talk about the knowledge of him the thing about the Jesus Christ and the relationship with Christianity is we, God desires that we would have a relationship with him that we would know him 
That's how come God created man was to have relationship and fellowship with him that we may know him. And Paul got a hold of this in his heart as, as the, he got blinded by the light and got apprehended by the Lord Jesus Christ. He realized it doesn't matter anymore about what I want. It doesn't matter anymore about anything. The only thing that matters is that I may win him and be found in him and that I may know him. Know him and what? The power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable even unto his death. You know where our victory comes? Jesus Christ died for us on the cross of Calvary. But you know where the victory came? By his stripes we are healed. The blood was shed that we may have life and have it more abundantly. But you know what? He's not dead. He's not in that tomb anymore. And the power of his resurrection. If he would have stayed dead, he would have been just like all the other gods and all the other religious people. But Jesus Christ died. He became our supreme sacrifice that we might have life and have it more abundant. Bring us back into relationship. We don't have to live under the law anymore. But now we can live by faith in Him, having a desire to know Him and fellowship with Him, by win Him and know Him and be found in Him through the power of the resurrection. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. One of these days, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And all of us that are caught, remain shall be called up to meet the Lord in the air. Paul is saying here, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, that he might be a part of the resurrection. Not as though I had already attained, that I might by any means might attain the resurrection. Not as though I had already attained, either, either were already perfect. But I follow after. Listen to this. If that I may apprehend that which I am apprehended of, Christ Jesus. He says it does. He said, "Not that I obtain, uh, that I may know Him and be attained in the resurrection. Not as though I had already attained, but where after were made perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus." On that road, when he was out trying to destroy, trying to persecute all the Christians, he got apprehended. Jesus blinded him by that light and apprehended him. He got a hold of him and changed his heart, changed his life. And Paul says, because he apprehended me, that the desire of my heart and the desire of my life is that I may apprehend him. In our life, in our hearts, if we want victory in, victory in Jesus, we must do it by being apprehended and having a desire to know him and fellowship with him and do these things that I may apprehend it of Christ Jesus brethren I count not myself to have apprehended I count not myself to have apprehended he said I didn't attain anything he got a hold of me Jesus got a hold of me and apprehended me and this one thing I do in our hearts and our lives we must do this but this is this one thing that I do it's not that I was apprehended but I was apprehended of Jesus got a hold of my heart he got a hold of my life and he won't let me go aren't you glad that Jesus Christ got a hold of your heart he got a hold of your life and he won't let you go this is what Paul was talking about I got apprehended of he apprehended me and because he did he said my desire is that I may apprehend him that I may know him that I may win him that I may fellowship with him that I may be found in him apprehended up listen to this in 13 brother I count myself to have apprehended I do not count myself to have apprehended this is the one thing that I desire Paul said but listen to this 
But this one thing I do. What does he do? Forgetting those things which are behind. Paul says, if anyone could brag, if anyone could do these things, I could. I lived underneath the righteousness of the law. I did everything right. I was doing everything right. But Jesus apprehended me. I got attained of the Lord Jesus Christ. He blinded me while I was on the way of doing what I thought was right. But he got a hold of my heart. And he said, now this one thing that I do, I forget those things are behind me. I forget those things that I right relied upon in my flesh. I forget those things that I right relied upon in my, by living according to the law and the things of my righteousness. I forget all of those things. I forget all of the past. I forget all of the sin. I forget all the mistakes that I made. I forget everything. I forget too many times. You know what the devil wants to do? The devil wants to bring back what the Lord delivered you from. The Lord, devil wants to bring it back and said, you remember when you did this, Ricky? You remember when you did this, when you sinned and you done this lie and you done these things? The devil wants to do it and Paul says, what I must do? I must forget all of those things that I've done. Forget all of those things, those mistakes that I made, all the good deeds I've done, and forget all the works of righteousness and all the things that I did. And this one thing that I do, I forget every one of them. But what does he do? I forget them. Forget those things which are behind. Too many times we as Christians, we get caught up looking behind. Not only in the sin and the things in our heart and our life, but even in Christianity and our relationship, we say, we look back and say, I remember what God did 20 years ago, or what God did 30 years ago, or what God did at Zuzu Street, and how God started Oak Corey Church of God and done all of these things. But Paul says we must forget those things that are behind because God's not dead. He's alive and he's alive forevermore. And because he is alive, all of those things, forget those things. Azuzu Street's past, but God's not past. The day of Pentecost was Sunday and he poured out his spirit but aren't you glad on Wednesday night you can still feel his power you can still feel his presence you can still feel him because he's not dead but he's alive and he sent his spirit upon us to be overcomers he says I forget those things forget those things and remember all the things that God done in your heart but don't say I remember when God healed me or when God filled me with the Holy Ghost. God still wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. God desires to fill us with the Holy Ghost every day. God desires for us to speak with tongues every day. God desires for us to have a relationship with Him everything. This is what Paul says, I had to forget all of those things. 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 And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Forget those things, the mistakes you made. Forget all of those things of the Lord Jesus Christ too many. It's good for us to look and remember salvation and all the things that he did. But we must forget those things and not let them hold us back to keep God from moving in our heart and moving in our life. He still wants to deliver. He still wants to say. He still wants to heal you. He still wants to do works and miracles in your heart and your life. And he said, we must forget those things which are behind and reach forth Unto those things what are before. What is before? Jesus Christ is before. We got a lot of things to look forward to. We got to look forward to the trumpet sounding and the dead in Christ shall rise. That's what he said. He said that I may be a part of the resurrection of the dead. I press toward, let us forget those things which are behind. And reaching forward unto those things which are before. 
what Paul is referring to is a athletic event again here. Running a race. If you're running a race, a track event, and you're running, if you begin to look back to all of those people to see where they are that's running against, you know what happens when you're running and you look back? You fall. You stumble. This is what Paul was trying to let us know as we run this race for the Lord Jesus Christ. That we don't keep looking back to say what he did for us 20 years ago or how he did these things, but we could be looking forward to what Jesus Christ is doing in our heart and our life today. He desires to do miracles. He desires to bless. He desires for us to do things in our heart and life. He says, I run this race. I forget those things. And I run this race. We must be attained and apprehended. It's in order for us to get attained and apprehended. Jesus has to get a hold of your heart and get a hold of your life. But once he does, he, you must be in turn have a desire to attain the Lord Jesus Christ and apprehend him. Once he gets a hold of us, he desires for us to get a hold of Him. And so two ways, street, two ways. Jesus gets a hold of us. And then He desires for us to get a hold of Him. We must have the desire to know Him and fellowship with Him and have a desire to worship Him and praise Him and know this, that I may win. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Paul is saying all them other things that I've done, Pharisee of the Pharisee, all of these things that I did, persecuting the church, and all of these things, it doesn't matter. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward it. What are you pressing for today? What is the desire of your heart? Since the Lord got a hold of you, what's the desire of you? What are you attaining for? What are you reaching for? What are you pressing toward? What is the thing that you're trying to apprehend? What is the thing that you're trying to attain? Are we trying to attain that wealth and riches and all these things? Or are we trying to attain the Lord Jesus Christ? Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be, be thus minded. If any thing you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. How are we perfect? How are we perfect? By being found in Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only one that lived a perfect life. Jesus is the only one that lived a holy life. Jesus is the only one that lived a righteous life. And it's through Him that we are perfect. Last verse. Let's read this. Nevertheless, where to we have already obtained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. What does he want us to mind? Verse 8, he says, Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I was reading this, and these words kept stoning on to me. Attained. I was obtained. And I obtained. And then he says, I was apprehended. And now my desire is to be apprehended, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and our hearts and our lives, as we've been looking at the last week, the, Paul was on the way, doing what he thought was right, and Jesus got a hold of him and changed his way, changed his heart, and turned him around. And because of what he got hold of, he said, none of these things move me. Why? 
There's none of these moved things because this is the key. He obtained, the Lord Jesus Christ obtained him. The Lord Jesus Christ apprehended him. And now his desire is that he may obtain the Lord Jesus Christ. That he may apprehend the Lord Jesus Christ. That he may know him and the fellowship with him. And know the power of the resurrection. And know these things in your heart and in his life. Today, the greatest desire of our heart, the greatest desire of our life should be to be obtained the Lord Jesus Christ to apprehend the Lord Jesus Christ if we ever get to the place where we think that we've obtained it all where we say look at me I'm here I've made it we're in trouble that's what Paul's talking about it's not what I've done he said but God attained me he apprehended me and because he did, my desire is that I may obtain him, that I may know him, that I may fellowship with him, that I may win him. I look, forget those things that are behind, and I look forward to those things that are before me. Apprehended. Aren't you glad that the Lord Jesus Christ attained you? That he apprehended you? But in our hearts and our lives, we must be in turn. We must obtain the Lord Jesus Christ and be apprehended. That's when he comes. He said, I forget those things behind me. And I press toward. We're running this race. If we spend our time looking back at what he used to do, or looking back about what he delivered us from, and looking back at the mistakes we made, we're in trouble. Paul says, look forward. God says, I got great things in store for you. I got great things in store for you, but if you keep looking back, you're not ever going to attain it. If you're going to win this race, you're going to win it, you must keep looking forward and keep running after the cries of the high calling of Jesus Christ. The death, the resurrection, the power of the resurrection being attained and being apprehended. Let us stand. Aren't you glad that Jesus got a hold of your heart? He got a hold of your life. And he won't let you go. He wants us to do the same thing with him. He wants us to get a hold of him. And not let him go. Truly we're in the last days. In the last time there shall be prayerless days. And they truly are. If you're going to make it in these last days, you must have a determination to be apprehended of the Lord Jesus Christ that I may know Him. That I may know Him. That I may know Him. That I may win Him. That I may obtain in the name of Jesus. That I may apprehend not that I was already apprehended of. Not that I attained anything. But he attained me. And now my desire, Paul says, is to know him. To know him. To know him. To know him. If we spend all of our time looking back at what God did, we're not going to ever receive what God has for us. Look forward. Press forward. Keep watching, keep marching, keep walking, keep running, keep doing these things, keep obeying the Lord and striving after Him that you may win the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us find a place of prayer tonight. Come around the altars and spend time with Him that you may attain Him, that you may win Jesus Christ, that you may know Him, that you may know Him in the name of
take it take my possessions great and small friends and family can have them all more than anything in my life I've got to make it more than you 
we can't give up we can't quit we've got to keep running and keep going forward and not looking back not giving up and not quitting we've got to finish this course Jesus called us for a reason and a purpose and that's not to give up not to quit but to cross that finish line and be an overcomer in order to do that we've got to attain the Lord Jesus Christ and got to apprehend him in the name of Jesus God bless you we love you we appreciate you remember to go with God and I can guarantee you he'll go with you God bless you